Welcome to Biology Classroom, and this is Biology 0610, equal to year 10. And I want to discuss the exam paper that I have shared already with you. So let's get sorted. Well, question number one. There is a diagram given to you, and it's a multiple choice question. So it's an experiment that demonstrates the movement of molecule, which means diffusion or an osmosis together. So the first thing that you need to do is to first save your time and read the questions. Look at the diagram. What actually is, even without reading this, the title or whatever, you should be able to know what this actually question is asking you, what it is about. I look at it, I see there is permeable membrane, partially permeable membrane, and there is a fauna, there is water, there are red ink in it. So this is because there is a permeable membrane. So um, it's about the movement of the particles, it should be something about um, osmosis, anything about osmosis and diffusion. So this question is about osmosis and diffusion. That's what you have to be ready for. I have my, I know the theory. Now I just want to look at the question now. What is the most likely reason for this color change? What is happening? It says after one hour, the water in the beaker turns red. Okay, the water in the beaker turns red. Okay, what is happening? There is a water surrounding this funnel. What do I have? It means that in before, before that, at the beginning of the experiment, it was only plain water in it. And inside the fauna was a red ink solution. The ink is inside only, inside the funnel. And because the funnel, the, the, the uh, top of it is actually being closed by permeable membrane. Um, so it means there's no way actually for it to pull out easily. So it should not be able to come out because there is a membrane there. We have closed this bottom of it. So we said well, after one hour, what we have seen is that the color of the water has changed and turned and, uh, and kept the uh, uh, the same color as the ink which is inside. So something has happened. So the particles of the ink, they have diffused out. That's what I know. But because we have, there is a permeable membrane. This is by osmosis. Um, so, but based on the osmosis definition, osmosis is the movement of the water molecule from where there are more to where there are less in concentration. It means that from a high water potential to low water potential. So that's true via the partially permeable membrane. So it should be water that leaves. But here, there is no change. It says, uh, it, didn't, it didn't say that there is a change in the level of the volume of the water outside or inside. It's talking about the color change. It means that ink, which is another part, yeah, that is solute or whatever, is not the water molecule that is diffusing out, it's going out. So it's the ink which is going out. So it's the ink, because it's not the water molecule, it's not the passage of the water molecule. So it can't be osmosis. This is, the ink is not, doesn't diffuse in and out of the funnel by osmosis. It's only water molecule. And the movement of the, these the, uh, particles of the ink, because there are solute or there are some other particles being dissolved in it inside the water. So it's done to the diffusion process. So the, by diffusion, the ink actual particles, they have moved out out of the uh, funnel. 
from red or more in concentration, they move to red or lower in concentration. So that's how all the diffusion happens. It doesn't matter if there is a permeable membrane there or not. It has nothing to do with it. It's by diffusion. But the water molecule, if they were like, if you descend on a water uh, volume or level of the water is changing in and out of the fauna, whatever. So we know that that's the water molecule that are moving in and out that I'm passing through the partially permeable membrane and that's osmotic membrane. So that should be by osmosis. But here, the water molecule, because they are balanced out everywhere, they are balanced and they are equally distributed. The most of them they got inside the fauna and outside the fauna, same concentration of the uh, water potential. So it won't actually uh, move at all because already it's balanced and equally distributed everywhere. But now, these ink molecules that are only present inside the funnel, so uh, there are high concentration there. So and outside of the funnel, there is no ink. They definitely have to move out to uh, passing through that per partially permeable mem mem membrane because they are quite small. They are tiny, so they can pass through it. They can they can cross the that partially permeable membrane, and they can go inside the beaker or, or the water of the beaker. So that's why the ink is diffused out through the membrane and out of the uh, funnel inside the beaker of the water. Okay, so the answer, the correct answer by knowing this, Definitely B and D are wrong because they are written by osmosis. It's not by osmosis. It's a water molecule, they move in and out in osmosis through the partially permeable membrane. But here is only a uh, movement of the uh, ink particles. Uh, it has nothing to do with the partially permeable membrane. It's only is that uh, the thing is that it is small enough to pass through it. So either between A and C, between A and C, if I want to choose, so we say A says molecules of the red ink they move, but C says molecules of the water they move. It's not water. If water moves, it should be definitely osmosis, and it's not the water. It's the ink which is moving, not the water. So because we are inside to outside. So A is the answer. I hope that you have understood this question. So I move on to the next. Question number two. The diagram shows water, sugar molecules on either side of a partially permeable membrane. Okay, so this is a partially permeable membrane. Why they have make it like this continuous line? Because the partially permeable membranes, uh, if you look at them with the naked eye, you won't see any hole in it. But the holes are so small, tiny, microscopic, you can see on what you put it on the, the microscope, you only can see. But they are, they are big enough to let the small molecules to pass through. So now you see that this is a partial permeable membrane. We have two different solutions here. This is the Simba. This big circle is used to show the sugar molecules. And the small water molecules are shown by these small, uh, small circles, as you can see. Where do we have more? of these smaller circles, more water, we have more water on the Y side, and we have less water on the X side. How can I define this? The place that has more water is more dilute, is less concentrated. I can say it has a high water potential. So Y has high water potential. X has less water potential. There's less number of the water molecules, and also is more concentrated compared to the Y, okay? And based on the definition, what happens during osmosis? Osmosis definition is the movement of the water molecule through the partially permeable membrane. From there, it is a higher water potential to lower water potential, down the concentration of water potential gradient, sorry, down the water potential gradient. So the movement, now, I know this, and I am able to interpret this diagram. 
and I have the, 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 the I know the theory. Now I read the options available. Option one: more sugar molecules pass through the membrane from X to Y than from Y to X. Well, it's talking about sugar molecule. No, not about the uh, water molecule. This one. And sugar molecule, if they pass through it, is by diffusion. Uh, we are not talking, we have this membrane, because this these sugar is dissolved into these two. This is a water should move from where it is more to where it is less. High water potential to less water potential. So it is from Y to X. The movement of water from Y to X, I've tried to find it. More water molecules pass through the membrane from, no, this is wrong. More water molecules pass through the membrane from Y to X than from X to Y. So D is correct. These two are passing, talking about the sugar, which is a solute, which is dissolved into the water. Uh, we are not talking in the osmosis about the sugar molecule. We are talking about movement of the water molecules through the partially permeable membrane from whether or more in concentration or higher water potential to whether or lower in concentration means that a lower water potential. So Y to X, the answer is D. The next question we have, as we, by looking at it, I just understand that it's about, again, diffusion and osmosis. Okay. So there are cells, by looking at the cells and the structure of it, because it has a cell wall and it has all the structure, I know that this should be a plant cell. Without even reading this extra information, because it just takes my time, otherwise, if it is real and necessary, I just want to know what actually it wants from me. Which diagram shows the changes in the appearance of a plant cell? When it is placed, this is important. They are placed or surrounded by the sh a concentrated sugar solution. Well, if the concentration of the both inside of the cell and so the, 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 the water which is surrounding the cell, both are the same. Um, so uh, we call it as an isotonic, both inside and outside, they have the same concentrations. So what is happening here is that there would be any any change in the size, and nothing happens. There won't be any osmotic, osmosis happening here. But if the any changes become unbalanced, I mean the concentrations, or maybe inside more concentrated outside, the things all uh, move in and out. To just keep that again, to on, or until we reach to a uh, equilibrium at the both side, uh, it is balanced. The concentration is balanced. Now, it says that we place in a highly concentrated solution. It doesn't matter, sugar solution, salt solution, what it is, it is a concentrated solution. It's not a pure water. It's concentrated. It means that around this cell, or the cell is surrounded by less water, a high amount of solute or sugar. Less water outside, but compared to the inside of the cell, it has less water molecule, but inside compared to the outside now, it has more water molecules, especially you see that. What vacuum is full of the liquid, inside the cell has cytoplasm full of the liquid, so the amount of water inside will be more than outside. So what happens? Based on the definition of the osmosis, if what is happening, the water should usually move from where? It is more concentration to, le to where it is less in the number. So it means from high uh, water potential to less water potential. So inside the cell, we have more water molecules. It means that high water potential. And, and outside, we have less water molecules. It means that lower water potential. So the water leaves the cell. It goes out through the uh, cell membrane and the cell wall. So that once the water leaves the cell, it means that the cell starts losing water, become dehydrated. Oh, after that, it become it loses water. Of course, the vacuole becomes small, smaller, and 
this port, I mean, this cell membrane, which is attached now before anything happens, is attached to the cell wall. It's taught to, it starts to gathering or shrinking inside of the cell, so it detaches itself from the cell wall. So it means that at the beginning, it is this shape, perhaps. Or I think this is the right shape. And then a smaller, and then that's what is happening to it. This is the correct shape. I mean, answer should be C. These are all wrong because it's getting uh, swollen. It become target. And this is wrong. So this is easy shrink. There's less water in it, and now it has gained water. So it should be wrong. So A and B definitely are wrong. D, you see, from the first and the second are correct. But at the end, you see, it become bigger. The size of the cell become bigger, become taller again. So this is also wrong. So the answer is C. At the beginning, it has a normal shape. Then it's also losing water. And you see that the cell membrane is detached from the cell wall, gathered inside. The back will become smaller. The terminology that you can use. The cell is shrink. The cell shrinks. The cell become dehydrated. It's plasmalized, uh, getting smaller, losing water. Flaxseed, so all the things that you can, the terminology that you can use to describe this cell. But because there is a cell wall around it, and the cell wall is so rigid, and so it doesn't let the, uh, actually, this cell completely loses its uh, outer uh, shape, you know, that the cell wall stays intact without any changes somehow. So that's question number three, and the answer is C. I go to the four, question number four. Question number four, make it a bit bigger so you can get a better image of it. So we have, before I go to the uh, this part, to the question or anything, so I just look at the diagram. I have these four beakers. The all, one of them has a boiled carrot. I just want to see the similarities and the difference between the each diagram. Boiled carrot, boiled carrot. Fresh carrot, fresh carrot. Okay, we have now about the solution. Sugar solution, water. Sugar, water. It means this is dilute, this is concentrated. Dilute, concentrated. Okay. So these two are regarding the, both of them have a fresh carrot, but all different solutions are the same, and these two, same. So the student cut out four pieces of the carrot root of equal size. The pieces are treated as shown in the diagram and then left for two hours. After two hours, which piece of carrot will be the smallest? Which one become a smallest? Become a smaller, it, mean, it means that the carrot become uh, shorter in size or become a smaller, or in order to become a smaller and fluffy and become soft, uh, it should lose water. Once the cell they lose water, they, because they uh, tend to get closer and with the shrink, so the size of the whatever it is is made of those cells also is affected by it, so become smaller and become shrink or whatever it shrinks. Uh, so the, in, I have to find out in which of them the carrot is losing water, uh, if there are both of them are losing, in which one it loses more. Okay. So it becomes smallest in size. So we have part A or B. Okay, in order to lose water, I said if the plant cell, because the potato is a plant cell, if it is placed in a uh, sugar solution, so it's a concentrated sugar, a sugar solution, if you place it there, because inside the cells, it has more water compared to the outside, because it is outside is has a sugar solution is very highly concentrated, so water should leave the cells. It means that the cell loses water. The water moves outside of the cell into the surroundings. So I have to find out first which of these containers they contain a highly or concentrated salt or in a sugar solution. Okay. So A and C. So it shouldn't be B and D, because in the B and D, the solution is dilute. It means it has more water compared to the inside of the cell. So definitely, the water penetrates in, and the, it goes inside the uh, carrot, 
uh, in the cells of the carrot, and the carrot will be tall, it will become solid, and it become bigger in size, it become longer, or become uh, more heavier or massive. So, per, so definitely D and B are wrong between A and C. Both of them are sugar solution or concentrated sugar solution. So which one loses most or compared? We have to find the smallest size carrot. So the one that loses more water is the one is the answer. Okay, which one is more? What, what is the difference between these two? Both of them are in the concentrated sugar solution. But one of them is a boiled carrot. The other one is a fresh carrot. Okay, what does that mean? That what difference does it make if it is boiled or it is unboiled? Is it fresh? If it, when you when you take a you know boil a, uh, any kind of the cells, when you boil it, you destroy it, you damage the cell wall, you damage the cell membrane and the structure. So once it is damaged, it no longer can perform. It can no longer can work. Cannot do its job. So. Osmosis happens when there is a partially permeable membrane. I mean, that cell membrane is a partially permeable membrane. Once it is damaged by the heating, it no longer works. So there won't be no osmosis. So it doesn't matter where you place that carrot in, which is boiled. It is a highly concentrated solution or what? It, nothing, no osmosis happens because it's already lost. It's uh, that integrity or structure of the cell membrane. So. The answer should be the one that contains the fresh carrot, which is this one, because the cells all stay intact or healthy, so the osmotic osmosis happened there, and there would be a loss of water in the cells of the carrot, so the carrot would be shrinked the most. Okay. Now, question number five. I will share this question paper again with you online. So, again, I know this is all about osmosis or diffusion. Diagram represents the molecules in two solutions, either size of the uh, fully permeable membrane. Okay, so I look at it. I look at the key first. Solute molecules are shown by the circle. And that small square shows the water molecules. So while looking at this, I see that. I understand on the left side, there is more water. So we have higher water potential. On the right side, there is more sugar or solute, but less water molecules. So there is lower uh, water potential on the right side. In which directions are the net movements of the molecules? Okay. So, water molecule is through osmosis. Don't forget, water is from where it is more to where it is less. So, from left to right. Left to right, it means either option A or option C. So, B and D definitely are wrong or not the answer. I don't look at them anymore. So, I have to choose now between A and C. I have to see which one is the answer. Between these two, now I have to look at the solute molecule. Look at the solute molecule. Um, you see, where usually the solute molecules, they also move from where they are more to where they are less in concentration. Okay, so it should be from, because we have solute molecules are these big rounded circles, so it should be from right to left. So between A and C, the answer is C. Question number six, the diagram shows an experiment set up to investigate osmosis in living cells. Well, again, I have osmosis here. So this is the plant cells. It, this potato is made of the plant cell. A lot of plant cells are actually just placed next to each other to make this potato tissue or potato. So, and we make actually some hole in it and uh, then we fill it with the water, plain water. There is not nothing more in it. It's a pure water. And um, we just place uh, the uh, bottom of it into a, another dish, a glass dish, 
which has concentrated salt su uh, sugar solution, and which means a concentrated solution. And it, it can be anything. Doesn't matter, salt, sugar, or what. Now, again, I, I revise the theory based on the definition of the osmosis. Water move from where it is more to where it is less. We have more water molecules here because it's pure, nothing added to it. Um, and we have less water here. So I expect the water from X go into Y. Now, what happens to the volume of waters? A water and sugar solution, Y, after 12 hours. Okay. Volume of water, X. Volume in the water, X. As I told you, because we have more water here, less water molecule here, higher water potential, less water potential. So more water moves from where it is more to where it is less. So it should go all the way through the cells, passing through the cell membranes and reaches to this Y. So we, this part, the water at this part, the level may decrease. It becomes lower and lower, become less and less. So it passes all the way, goes there. It leaks into this, diffuses out into the uh, glass dish. So the water can be removed from eggs, become lax, uh, become this one, the, the level of the water goes down and will be added up at the other side, which is Y. So the Y should, in the Y, we have a decrease in the volume uh, of the this solution. Decrease in the volume, not in the concentration. So volume here increases, here decreases, it goes down, it goes up because this is leaking out. Once it goes out, so it adds up to the amount of water, so the volume will increase. The level of the water will go and stand higher again in the dish. So the answer should be A. Now we are on question number seven. And the question number seven is a table given about looking at a table, the first thing that you will understand is that the question is about food test. So, the question says, you have been given four different foods to test it for the composition. And the results are shown in the table. Which food contains protein, but not reducing sugar or starch? Well, which one contains, it's very important, which one contains protein? Test for the protein, the first thing that I review in my mind. And I get some help from the theory, of course. So protein are being tested by Burrett, uh, but the Burrett uh, test what reagent so means this one is showing the results of the protein test but not reducing sugar or a starch a starch is, a starch is tested by iodine solution and the reducing sugar be tested by benedic reagent so it means that if there is this one this test for protein is positive the result on the this part this column which is the Burrett test should be positive. If the Burette test is positive, you know that the original color of the Burette solution or the reagent is blue, ocean blue, as I showed you. So if it is positive, it shouldn't be blue. So it means that by just looking at this, I omit the C and D option. So it means that these two shouldn't be the answer. Now I have to choose between A and B. Which one is correct? Okay, I pick one of them. Test for starch. Uh, so if it is negative, um, it means that there is no starch in that food, for example, in the composition of that food, which is tested. Original color of this, the iodine test, iodine solution, is brown or brick brown or red. Once the test is positive, it changes into black or dark blue. So 
it says it is negative, it means it's not showing that it has, so the test should be negative. If it is negative, so it should remain the same color of the original color of, this, of the iodine. So original color is brown, not black. So without even reading or going trying to read the other one reducing sugar, I can, um, I can pick this one as a correct answer. So B is the answer. But for those that don't know, reducing sugars are being tested by the benedic reagent. The original color of the benedic is blue color or light blue, ocean blue. But once actually uh, it becomes positive or means that is it some sugar, reducing sugar present in the uh, food which is tested. So the color changes and it gives us a range of the color from green to dark red or black red. Okay, so I based on the concentration of that sugar, sugar which is inside the food. Um, so one more time, the red test is for the protein. If the result, like here, it says it should be there, so it's positive. So the color of the blue color of the beer should change into purple. So based in A and B, which one answer? I pick iodine, which is test for the starch, because it said there is no starch in it, so the test should be negative. If it is negative, it means that they should remain the same color as the original iodine color. The original color of the iodine is brown, so I choose B as the answer. I move on to the next question, question number eight. The diagram represents a protein molecule, protein, okay, protein, uh, again, review in my mind. The protein is made of the amino acids. Amino acids are joined together like this. This is one amino acid, amino acid, and then make a very long chain of the protein. And then the protein goes under different uh, conformational changes and then give, gives itself a 3D shape and everything to make uh, other proteins based on the need for whatever. What do this small silica represent? Now, I reviewed my, everything in my mind before I go for it. So I know that proteins are made up of amino acids. The building blocks or the small molecules or the monomers of the uh, protein molecule are amino acids. So A is the answer. Why not fatty acids? Because fatty acids are for the fats molecule, fat molecules like phospholipid, like uh, what the uh, as you can say any kind of. Um, so uh, for the glycerol, or glycerol, that one is uh, also for the makes the uh, phospholipids and others. And also simple sugars, simple sugars, now if the, the simple sugars are themselves are monomers, when they join together, they make big uh, polysaccharides and disaccharides. So, yes, so for this, the answer is A, because the proteins are made up of the small amino acid molecules. Number nine, the diagram shows two foot tests carried out on solution. X. Okay, let's have a look into it. Okay, uh, this is solution X. We do not know what is inside solution X. That's why they name it as X to make it a little bit ambiguous. Uh, so that's the Bure solution. Bure is for the test of the protein. That's what I know. Then benetic solution or reagent, which is used to test sugar or reducing sugars. Now look at the result. I look at the result for H. This is to test protein. I just want to know if the, t t the result of the test is positive or negative. Look at the color. The color of the beer solution I told you, original color, is blue. So once the reaction happens, if there is a protein there, so the color should change. This is changed to purple color. So it means that there is a protein in it. Now let's have a look into the other one. This is for sugar, reducing sugars. Now, in the reducing sugar, if there is, the test is positive, it should be a change in the color. The original color of the benedic solution is blue. Uh, once uh, in the, if the result is positive, 
So it should change into, it gives you a range of the colors like green, which is the low concentration of sugar, reducing sugar, up to uh, dark red, which is the color of the presents that representing high concentrated, uh, concentrated sugar solution. So it changes to red, it means that it's only positive, so there is reducing sugar. Here, B red, for the protein, there is protein in it. So both of them, protein and reducing sugar. Let's have a look into the options available. Protein and a starch. We didn't test for a starch. I do not know if there is a starch there or not. So if anything is uh, written a starch, I just remove that. So this is not the answer, not the answer, not the answer. So A, C, and D are already uh, omitted from the my choice or options available. So it means that what, what the only thing which is remaining is B. So B is the answer. Okay. Question number 10. The graph show the quantities of selected vitamins and mineral ions in four foods. Okay, so this is vitamin C, vitamin D, iron, and calcium. Um, the numbers no, that here is not important because the units are all the same, and we got the uh, different foods which are tested for the calcium. How much calcium do they have? We see which one is has more calcium beans, eggs, fish, or fruit like that. So you see the highest uh, vitamin C can be found in beans, the vitamin D in fish, and iron, egg, and calcium fruit. Now, the question, which fruit is the richest source of the vitamin or mineral ions essential for transport of oxygen by the blood? Well, this is a key which is given to you. They didn't exactly told you what actually, which one, which of these uh, uh, foods or the nutrients or actually they want to tell us or they want to know which one is uh, we want you to find out in the food which one is higher they just gave a key to you the one that transport oxygen okay oxygen tra is transported by the red blood cells red blood cells i go to the structure of them to see what actually mineral or vitamin or whatever is needed to make one red blood cell uh, to perform or do its job. The, in the structure of the red blood cells, there are hemoglobins. Hemoglobins, or as come from the heme and globin, globule. Globulin, globulin, so it means that a rounded shaped thing or vesicle or sac, which is uh, has heme group in it. It means heme with iron, so and it has this mineral on it. So it means inside the red blood cells, there should be iron to, to make hemoglobin so that the hemoglobin can be attached, uh, oxygen can be carried by the uh, uh, red blood cell everywhere. So we need iron. If you take iron, you can make your blood, red blood cells, more red blood cells, and more effective in can, transportation of the oxygen. So which food has more iron? That's what. So we do not need to look at the vitamin C, no, C not D, and neither uh, calcium. You look at iron. Which food has more iron or the most iron? That's egg. This is milligram per 100 grams, okay? Between two and three, two point half. This is quite a lot compared to the fruit, fish, and bananas. So the answer is egg. I just circle around B. B is the answer. Question number 11. What does the digestion of starch produce? Okay. When I talk about digestion, it wants to ask you, if you break this starch molecule into small, it's a smaller basic units, I mean, into monomers, what do you find? Starch is being made up of a smaller, smaller simple molecules that are called as sugar molecules or glucose this one is glucose these starch molecules is just uh, binding a lot of glucose molecules that are type of sugar simple sugar to each other to make line chain which is a very complex structure of an insoluble form of the sugar called as a starch so starch is made of the small glucose molecules. Answer is B. 
as I told you, is not mineral salt, is not water, not fatty acids because they are used to make lipids and oils, and it's not also water, not mineral salts. The answer is B. The next question is about the diagram of a starch molecule again. So you see, as I told you, if a starch is made above a small sugar glucose molecule, so the, each circle should represent the glucose molecule. One, two, three, four uh, glucose molecules are just chained to each other. Which diagram shows this molecule after it has been completely digested? After digestion, you should not see any binding between any of these molecules. They should be separated completely. So as you can see, D is the only answer. These are wrong because they have bonds in them. I think they are uh, linked together. So this is all wrong. So the answer is D. Next question, question number 13. In a photosynthesis experiment, a plant is left in bright sunlight for several hours. A left is then removed from the plant and tested for starch using iron solution. Okay, we are testing for starch, and we are dealing with these kind of leaves. And it's about photosynthesis and starch formation. The diagram shows the leaf from the plant that was used in the experiment. Okay, what is specific about it? What's really special? The white area and the green area. These have two different port sections. The one is a colored green, which has it is green because it has lots of chloroplast, chlorophyll, the green pigments to do photosynthesis. Well, and the white area, it is white. The color is white. It has no color. It is white. It means that there is no green pigment. If there is no green pigment, it means that there is no chloroplast, no chlorophyll. If there is no chlorophyll, it means no photosynthesis. Well, I, this is the key I need, which the diagram shows the result of the experiment. In this diagram A, so after you apply iodine on it, what happens? Usually you know that if there is a starch there in the plant, in the leaf, the color of that area should change into dark blue or black color. I know wherever the photosynthesis is happening, wherever the photosynthesis is happening, there is a starch being formed. A starch is produced when there is a photosynthesis. If there is no photosynthesis, there is no starch. So in the white area, there is no green pigments. There are no chlorophyll. So there won't be any photosynthesis. So there won't be any starch there. So if I put that one drop of the iodine here, I don't see any changes in the color. It remains the same color. But if I put on the green area, because it, it has green pigments, I don't photosynthesis, so there would be a change in the color it become black or dark. So I expect C to be answer, the correct answer. Question number 14. The test tips given again, and you put them on, in, under the sunlight, full sunlight. So it means that all of them are receiving sunlight. The, uh, the sun is not, uh, they are not being prevented from getting enough sunlight. So this sun for all of them is always kept the same. After several hours, which test tube contains the most dissolved oxygen? Okay, dissolved oxygen. Well, look at the first test tube. It's water and animals, snail. Animals, the respiration, they respire. In the respiration, like ice, they breathe in oxygen and they produce carbon dioxide and water and also energy to, to perform, to move, to, uh, to grow cells, to, to increase the size. But how about the plants? Because water is actually the same. All of them, they have the same amount of water. They are kept in the sunlight, full sunlight. And the, 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 the test tube actually is all closed by this bunga, bung. And also, but the difference is that the first one is a, like a control. It doesn't have anything is it in it. So it's plain water. Not, no plant, no animal. But the second one has a plant and animal together. The, the next one has only plant, and this one has animal. 
This and a snail as an animal, it, it just do respiration. And when it spire, it produce uh, carbon dioxide and water and energy. What it's using is consuming now. It takes in the oxygen, use it, use the oxygen, because it's using the oxygen to make the uh, dissolved oxygen in the water less and less every time. So it decreases. So this is decreasing the amount of dissolved oxygen in the water. But what there is a plant, the plants they do photosynthesis and also respiration. But in the, in the sun, full sunlight, usually they do all photosynthesis, more photosynthesis. In the photosynthesis, um, they take in carbon dioxide from the water and then also water and they mix them together in the presence of the light, uh, sunlight energy, and also by the chlorophyll that they have inside the leaves. They produce oxygen and they, you can see the oxygen all coming out of the leaves in the form of the bubbles. So this is, shows that it, there is a oxygen, and oxygen required can be dissolved into the water easily. So it increases the amount of the oxygen immediately there. And also, uh, and also, it produces uh, food, uh, glucose is being formed, which is used by the plant itself. And also, um, some of it is stored as a starch in the leaf. So this one is adding to the oxygen of the water. This one is re removing it from the water. So it's just adding up to the oxygen of the water. This one is removing oxygen from the water, so this is not the answer. Between B and C, which one? Because this one is using up and this one is producing, it becomes like maybe equal. So the, the amount of the oxygen, this oxygen cannot be the same as this one. This one should always be increasing, but this one is some, something like that. Snail is using the oxygen which is produced by the, uh, this plant. So, of course, B, the amount of the oxygen finally in the water would be much more higher than C at the end. So the answer is B. Question number 15, which characteristics do bony fish have? Bony fish. It means that a vertebrate is a vertebrate and a fish. Um, it's a bony fish. It means that it has a vertebra, it has a backbone, and so it is a vertebrate, so as it comes from the name. So it should be either, because this is wrong, because it's put cross here. So it should be either C or it should be D. Between C and D, we want to choose one of them to see which one is the answer. So, do you think the fish has hairs? Hairs are just for the mammals, and as one of the features of the mammals, fish they don't have hairs, so they have scales, uh, or they're very tiny, small, microscopic, or sometimes hard shells and uh, scales. So, fishes they have scales, or they don't have hair. So, definitely D is wrong. So, C is the answer. So answer for the question number 15 is C. Question number 16. I'll make it a bit smaller so we can get the full image. So the diagram shows a leaf. It's one leaf, whole leaf. So there is one stem here again. There is another leaf here, here, here. What this leaf is not in, you know, integrated is like into small, small sections. This segmented is. A, uh, it was uh, what we call as it has many leaflets. So it has a key to you, and it's asking you to identify the plant, see which one it is, A, B, C, or D. So I just you have to follow the route, and every time you have to choose either to go to the left or to the right. Okay. You start your journey from here. Oh, it's a leaf, yes. So either to, uh, should I go to the right or left? I have to first read this one. Leaf in one piece, or it is more than one piece. If one if leaf is more than one, one piece, it has many leaflets. So I go to the left. Now, again, I have two options, right or left. Leaf edge is the smooth. You look at the edge of the leaves. Or it is jacked. It's not the smooth. As you can see, it is jacked. So I choose this one. If I choose this one, so this should be the name of the plant, D. Now 
I will continue on the question number 17 and you see the feature uh, is a drawing of an animal, which is a squirrel, and it's asking which feature identifies that this is or proves that this is a mammal. Um, so you have to see the characteristics of the, each of these uh, uh, different, uh, like the birds, mammals, or uh, this group of the animals and uh, organisms. You have to be able to distinguish them based on the features that they have. Eye is not only for the mammals. Many of the animals, they got eyes. Four limbs, not only uh, mammals, they have it. It can be even the reptiles they have. Uh, tail is not only for the mammals, not all the mammals, they have got tail. Uh, and many, many also other, uh, other, for example, animals they can have. Like with the birds, they got tail. So the only option which is left is C, which is fur or hair. So the, uh, the mammals, they got hair on the body or the body is covered with the fur. So the answer is C. Question number 18. And the diagram shows how a seed changes after it is planted in soil and water. Which characteristics of the living things are demonstrated by this sequence? Well, as you can see, why see the seed is actually growing. It's getting, it, it's changing the it size, the mass of these, the number of the cells. So it's, it's signs of the growth. So, um, so the one that has growth are A and B. The other ones that don't have it. The things that I can also see in it that the roots and the shoots are oriented toward different uh, orientation they got. Uh, the shoots are moving upwards and the uh, roots are moving downward. It doesn't show any like nutrition. I mean, it doesn't show any how it is like being like feeding over area. And it although it doesn't show any excretion, like excretion, like for example, like the kind in the form of the trans uh, transpiration, for example. But it doesn't show it. We do not see anything here. It can't be seen otherwise. It's not the reproduction too. This is not called reproduction. This is seed germination and growth. So the reaction that the reason that the shoots are moving upward and the roots are going downward is a response to the uh, gravity and light. So the response to the gravity called as gravity or geotropism, and the response to the light, which is uh, is which is a called as a phototropism. Um, so there are kind of the sensitivity in the plants because sensitivity means to show some kind of the changes or to detect and show some changes based on the, um, sorry, some reactions based on the changes that are made in, in the surrounding of the organisms. So they detect the changes around them and they make some reaction based on that changes that are being made into the environment. So all, all for survival. So the, the best actual option here is D, because we have a sensitivity, phototropism, and gravity or geotropism are the uh, examples of the sensitivity of the plants, to the light and gravity, gravitational force, and also growth, because you can see that the size and the number of the cells and the mass of the plant is actually increasing. Question number 19. The diagram below is a sign, uh, actually is a shows part of the flowering plant. So again, we have these uh, dichotonomous keys, and you have to base on that, find the, uh, identify the type of this plant. Is it A, B, C, or D? Which one? So we have to follow exactly, reading one by one, each of these options. First, uh, the first option has two parts. You have to choose either this one or that one. And based on that, you have to follow the instructions given after that dotted line. Okay, so we go one by one. I read the first one, the first instruction. 
three the three petals it has or it has more than three petals so we see one two three four petals each of these flowers they got four petals which are more than three so we choose this one between this and this i choose this one so this is the answer so go to three so all to three means i go to option three so i go and read this one and i skip this one number two because this is not the answer it was the answer so i have to follow this route but now this one so between these two options which one you have to choose leaves parallel veined or they're not parallel veined if they're parallel means that they are straight lines next to each other the similar distances so called as a parallel is, it, is, is the veins on the leaves are parallel? No, what I see, they all branch out. They are not parallel, so I choose D. So the answer is D. This plant is D option. Question number 20. The diagram shows a single cell from an organism called Spirogyra, which features does is actually this uh, is a plant cell. So is a kind of plant sir. share with the plant sir. this organism share with the plant sir. so I have looked at the features that they have so the features are already uh, labeled for you it has a vacuole it has so you know that the I just compare it with the plant cell the plant cell do they have vacuole yes they have a very big vacuole which is a liquid inside Cytoplasm, yes, they have cytoplasm too. Plants also have cytoplasm. How about chloroplast? It has chloroplast. Does a plant cell has a chloroplast? Yes, it has chloroplast. So this also share chloroplast, cytoplasm, vacuole with it. So all should be ticked here. Which one? Chloroplast, cytoplasm, and vacuole. Tick, tick, tick. And so this is wrong. B is wrong. C is wrong. So between. A and D, I have to choose one. So, nucleus is actually one of them is ticked, and the other one, no. It has a nucleus, definitely a plant cell has a nucleus too. So, A is the answer. D is wrong, without even going through the cell wall. Because the plant cell also has a cell wall, this also has a cell wall, so all of them should be ticked. So, A is answer. Question number 21, which is not anymore a structure question well now question number 21 some students investigated osmosis in real potato sticks and defined the term osmosis sometimes if you order to save your time first read the question and if you didn't needed more information you should go back and read everything from the beginning to get more detail about uh, the question and then based on that you can answer but now without even reading this part the main question is this what is osmosis so definition of the osmosis it has two marks so at least you have to mention two important things first of all osmosis is the movement of the water molecule this is very important you have to mention the water molecule they move so osmosis is a movement of the water molecule from high water potential to low water potential this is very important high water potential to low water potential or you can say down the water potential gradient down it means from it's like from highland to down coming down a mountain so it is down the concentration gradient we are coming down the mountain and so through partially permeable membrane this is also important so it has three parts that you have to mention. First is the movement of the water molecule. Second, from higher water potential to lower water potential. And three is via or, part, or through the partially permeable membrane. Then you'll get the full mark, the whole mark will be given to you. The next part of it, is a student measured the mass of a full potato sticks using an electronic balance, okay? So the masses are given here. And so the masses, I mean, they are kept the same. Masses of the full and electric balance, okay? 
shows the electronic balance. So now we have the student left each potato stick in one of four different liquids for five hours. I mean, the potato masses were all the same. Then they have been treating them, treating them with more uh, different into the different liquid solutions, uh, the solutions. So they have the different concentrations of the salt solution. For example, the first one is a distilled water. This is very pure water. It has nothing in it. And the other one, now the gradually, the concentration of the salt solution is increasing. It's very 0.1, then becomes 0.5, then become one mole per dm cube sodium uh, chloride solution from the lowest to highest. After five hours, the measured mass again and calculated the change in the mass. So, product which of the liquids would cause the largest decrease in mass of the potato stick. Largest decrease in the mass, I mean, becomes the lightest or become the mass, it becomes so small, smaller, smallest mass it will have. Which one? So, in order to become very small, it should have been lost water. If it has lost water or become dehydrated or plasmalized, it should be placed inside a solution which is highly concentrated. I have to look for a solution which is the highest concentration it has. So we, from here, this is the lowest concentration. And then when I move down, it becomes the highest concentration, which is one mole per uh, decimeter cube of sodium chloride solution. So the answer is one mole per uh, dm cube of the sodium chloride solution is the one that causes the uh, the potato to shrink the most, so the mass of it decreases the most because it has lost so much water compared to the others. Part two of this, the student dried the potato sticks with paper towel before putting them on the electronic balance, such as why? Well, it's very important. When you are trying to have a fair uh, experiment, so you want to make it very accurate. So you should remove any kind of the uh, things that may cause uh, cause you to do any mistake or any source of the error. Um, you know that uh, when you are putting them inside the salt solution and you are treating with a different concentration, so the water will be st uh, stuck on the surface of the potato and it actually adds up to the weight or to the mass of the potato when you are weighing it. So it will, be, it will get the weight of the potato plus the mass of the uh, water, water which is on the surface of it and stuck on it. So first of all, in order to avoid any kind of the um, errors in, the, in our calculations, then we need to clean it or dry it up well with a towel to make sure that there is no uh, extra water uh, actually uh, glued on the uh, potato sticks. So to make the test fair and accurate. Pot C, after the experiment, the student noticed that the potato stick with the lowest mass was soft and floppy. That's why the potato stick had become soft and floppy. Again, I want you to, uh, to know the meaning of this termination, uh, the, uh, these terminologies. Some students won't know. Uh, if something becomes soft and floppy, if you have tried to, I think you just do it. You just take some potato, cut it, cut you know, de skin it, remove the skin, and then place it into the uh, under the uh, area under the uh, the Y uh, and after uh, after a while you will see that it lo when it loses water, um, so it, it becomes softer. It becomes and as not, it doesn't become hard in touch when you touch it. So it becomes smaller. It becomes flop, floppy. It becomes soft and in touch because and you can easily bend it. You can easily shape it. About when it is hard, when it is target, when it has lots of water in it. Uh, of course, it is very hard in touch. You cannot even bend one uh, easily, one bend of the bend the, this uh, potato sticks because they are very hard in touch. They are so stiff. So in order to this happen again, to become soft and fluffy, so you can easily shape it, you can easily form it, you can easily bend it. They are flexible. 
they should be dehydrated, they should lose water. In order to lose, water, to lose water, you have to, they should be placed inside a concentrated solution, any concentrated solution. So then there is an imbalance of the uh, uh, osmotic you know, uh, pressure in and outside of the potato. So inside there is more higher water potential and outside is less water potential outside of the cells or outside of the potato. So the water from inside of the potato or the potato cells, it goes out into the surrounding solution. And so, so explain why the potato stick has become soft and floppy. Um, so because the, because the, uh, So because the, these potato sticks are placed in the um, uh, concentrated solutions, so uh, the, potato, the potato itself inside the cells has a very high water potential, and the outside inside the solution, the solution has a very low water potential. So the water moves or diffuses out of the cells or plant cells or the potato cells into the solution. And that is an explanation from there. It has a high water potential to where it is low water potential. So the cells are plasmalized or the lost water to become flaccid, to become floppy, floppy, become soft. I always also look at the mark that it is given assigned to each of these questions. It's very important. It shows you how much you have to write and to what actually you have to refer to. Um, part D of this question, the students followed the same experimental procedure with boiled potato sticks. Again, the same thing that we have discussed before why the, for the multiple choice. And found no overall change in the mass in any of these solutions. So, suggest why the mass of boiled potato sticks remain the same. As I told you, when you boil the potato, you are destroying or damaging the cell membrane of the cells, plant cells, or the potato cells. So, for osmotic to happen, it needs a that partially permeable membrane. We need it. So it needs a cell membrane. By boiling the cells, by boiling potato, you are destroying the cell membrane. So it means that there will be no longer osmosis occurring here. And that is the reason. Because there is no cell membrane because it's been destroyed. The next part of it, ciliates are classified in the kingdom protoxys. Bacteria are classified in the kingdom prokaryotes. State two structural features that distinguish the cells of the protoxys from a prokaryote. So we need to understand first what the question wants from it from you. You have to write about those features, those outer part features, the the things that you can see from all outward out on the surface of, of, of the things of the uh, these two organisms that, that it cause you to distinguish the protactors from the prokaryotes. I mean, what makes them different? What do they, what this one has that the other one doesn't have? Protoctus and prokaryotes. One of them is not a protoctus. You can write that it has a cell wall. And but it, the cell wall has a different composition. Protoxys, they have a different, for example, it can be uh, uh, the different composition it has. It's not, it's not made of, this, uh, for example, cellulose or anything. Mm, it's a peptidic glycan. And we have also protoxys, they have nucleus. Uh, the other two things are similar. Uh, but uh, prokaryotes, the prokaryotes, uh, you may, uh, for example, not uh, find those nucleus in it. But all the all the protoctis, they have got these nucleus in the cell. There may be there are two different features. You can write even more. Uh, some of them I have already mentioned in your question paper as the answer.
Now, uh, before I move on to this part one more time, I just want to uh, answer this part. So, uh, for this part, uh, for the, for example, uh, for part tactics, they got nucleus, nuclear em membrane, nuclear envelope, or you can write the, they have some uh, membrane bound organelles and the internal membranes. So, and the cell walls, but with a different composition if it is present. And it has a linear chromosomes. So, uh, so it is how it is different from the uh, prokaryotes. The next part of this question, uh, there is a, actually in this figure, you're seeing a five species of ciliated, the ciliate that are found in the sea beach treatment works. And now we just, we'll go back on this, but we have to first read the question that what it is asking us and make it a little bit bigger because it's hard to see. Okay. So we said that there is a dichotomous key to identify the ciliates in the figure below. And what you all needed to do, again, you need to complete the key by writing the suitable statements. For the box two, you need to distinguish species B and E, and for the four, four, you need to write something, give a key that distinguishes between species A and C. It is how you're going to find the answer. So I go back to the diagram first, the chart. So the chart is here. First, has a ring of cilia at the end of the organism? If the answer is yes, so you have to follow in this direction. And if answer is no, you have to go down the column. So does it have a ring of cilia at one end of the organism? So, because we are going for this part, for number two, it's between B and A. It's been B and E and DNA. B and E, D and A, I'm not mistaken. Let me check again, sorry, B and E. Sorry, A and C. This one, this two, and this two. So you see, does it have, you have, you have to refer to this. If not, you have to refer to this. So it's the answer. So for this one, yes, they have a ring of the cilia. Say yes, so we're guiding us to this direction. It has a ring of the cilia at the end of the organism. Of course they have, yes. At the end they have, at the end it has, it has. Now, between these two, what should I write that this distinguishes between B and E? Look at the features of them. Look at, we see how we can uh, make, actually uh, differentiate between these two. So what we can write here, Morgan, for example, for this box too, we can write, it has two rings of cilia. Or for example, stock is absent two rings of cilia, or stalk is absent. If it has two rings of cilia, and the answer is yes, so it means that it is organism B. Is it correct? Yes. But it has only one, so it should be organism E. Or you can write, there is no stock, it doesn't have any stock. If the answer is yes, it doesn't have any stock, so it is organism B. What is the stock? This way, this part. And this one doesn't have, so that's again correct. Don't write it has a stock. Right? It has a stock, so you're guiding us to the wrong direction. Because once the answer becomes yes, it has, so it will become organism B, while organism B has no stock. So you have to write absence of stock. Okay? For the other one, if I want to distinguish between these two, a and C, what should I write here in this box? First, it has a star-like structure inside the organism. If the answer is yes, become organism D. 
Yes, but the other ones don't have. Now, between these two, or should I write that into the box that shows that it is organism A or it is or either is organism C? So answer should, if it is yes, they become A. So if answer is no, should be C. Let's go back to them. Okay. What can I say? Um, for the second one, maybe for example, you can write it has a covering of cilia, or you can say fused cilia absent, because it already have given a key to you. As we said, these are called as a cilia, which is fused together. So we say fused cilia are absent. If it is yes, the answer is yes, it is absent, so it would be A. Let me see. Fused cilia is absent, it means it doesn't have a fused cilia. Yes, so it's organism A, because it really doesn't have. A voice is no, it has, so it's organism C. So these are the answers that you can give. You have to look at uh, in detail. You can write anything else if you think that you can. For example, there are many torn like structures or the cilia, uh, scattered around and not a regular pattern, but you can say there is a regular arrangement of the covering of the cilia around the cell. So if the answer is yes or no, then you'll find the name of the organism. There are the different ways, or you can refer to the patterns inside, but the other one doesn't have. Yep, any kind of the features that you see, you can pick up. Now we go to this next part. Now, complete the table by putting a tick by each characteristics of life that can be seen in the still photograph from the video in figure 22.3, this one. By looking at this, means what do you see? First of all, is a predatory ciliate. Video recording was made of one is feeding on paramecium. Paramecium is feeding on the paramecium. So, this one is eating this, so feeding is already given one, one of the answers to me. So what can I know? One of them should be feeding or nutrition, one of the answers. So I put a tick in front of nutrition. So this is what I can see by looking at this figure, this picture. The other one that I can see, I see the change of the location is it's changing its place from one place maybe to another. So you see that there is a change in orientation in the place. So it's moving. This picture shows that it's moving. So the movement also can be ticked, but I don't see any growth. There is no change in the size or we do not see any reproduction. Not, no reproduction, no binary for example, fusion, whatever. Um, I don't see an excretion to give me out the waste material. I don't see it. I'm just seeing that it's taking in the materials, the food inside its body. And so the answer is nutrition and movement. It's not respiration. Respiration uh, is when the, your the food and the oxygen is a chemical reaction happens inside the cells. And once they respire, because the uh, oxygen is taken and mixed with the food, food is broken down into water, carbon dioxide, and energy, which is used for the movement. But you do not see any sign of the water production. You do not see any sign of the gas being given out, like carbon dioxide. You do not see any oxygen being taken in. There are no sign of that. This is a chemical reaction happening inside the cells. We are hard to see. Question number 23. Well, is a single cell organisms that is classified in the kingdom of the fungi and they see the cell? So state one another, one other kingdom that contains organisms that all have structure A. All of them, they have a structure A. First of all, I have to see what this is. Okay. So C, because it looks like a plant, so it's a fungi, plant. 
So C actually is referring to a vacuole, so it's a big vacuole that it has inside it. And then the other one, which is the e, look, pointing at exactly at the inner inner membrane or of this uh, cell, uh, there are two membranes here, but you see this is pointing into the inner part. So this one is cell membrane, but the one in the middle or this one, which has a thickness here, is a cell wall of it. Definitely, if it's pointing outside or inside this actual line, it means that it is cell wall. Inner, the inner membrane or the inner line shows the cell membrane. And these are small dots here. They are ribosomes. So inside it, you can find enzymes in it uh, for digestion of the, uh, any kind of material. And then we have G. G is the nucleus. And this is a genetic material in it, or there is a nuclear membrane around it, surrounding it. And F, F is an endo, endoplasmic reticulum, but because there are lots of ribosomes on it, so we call it as a rough endoplasmic reticulum. We have two types of endoplasmic reticulum. One of them is rough, the other one is soft. Rough, it has these kind of small, small dots on it. That's why the surface is not smooth. Um, and it has lots of ribosomes. Um, but the other one, which is a smooth uh, and a plasmic reticulum, it doesn't have these ribosomes. The other one, called as E, as you can see from the structure, and it has fold inside, so it is mitochondrial, and it's responsible for uh, cell respiration, and for white energy for the cell. And D is cytoplasm, and that liquid part that everything is floating inside. Okay, not floating, it's streaming inside. So, so now, stake or other kingdom organisms that have this structure, for example, like kingdom of uh, plants or plantia. We can write plants. Uh, that would be another answer, suitable answer. Or you can write uh, prokaryotes. Well, I move it, roll it down, scroll down. Okay. So now this table, we have to complete it, of course. So the cell function is to store this storage of the genes that DNA is inside it. So the cell structure and the letter is showing that where actually we can find the genes or the DNA is inside the nucleus. I maybe I make it a little bit smaller so everything can be fitted inside this. Yeah. This was, as I told you, this is a nucleus, so the label is G, the place that you can, the genes are stored. The cell structure is called as nucleus, the name, the name of it. Aerobic respiration, where does aerobic respiration happen? In the mitochondria. That's where the food mixed with the oxygen and provides ATP or energy for the use of the cell and plus water and carbon dioxide. So it is uh, called as an aerobic respiration. And it is happening inside the E, which is mitochondria. mitochondria. The next one, amino acids are assembled to make protein. Uh, sorry, uh, I said ribosomes, uh, the mistake here. Yeah? Ribosomes, are, I said there's a, uh, there's a mistake with the lysosome. <laughs> so H is a ribosome. Uh, there are ribosomes. I say uh, I, when I want to talk about the uh, function of them, I said that I was talking about the lysosome function. So lysosomes are smaller than this, and they have they got uh, the rounded circles or the sacs or the vesicles that contain enzymes that want to for the digestive things. But these are these are small dots because these are similar to the one that are on the endoplasmic reticulum. They are called as a ribosome. Ribosomes are made uh, are meant to synthesize protein there. So the protein synthesis happens in the ribosome. And amino acids are assembled to make protein. So it is ribosome. And what is the letter showing that organelle is H. So it's forgiving for the mistake I've done. Okay. So I'm making this one a bit bigger again.
And this is the diagram, this is the diagram and it's shown in bacterium Shirishia coli. And the actual length of the bacterial cell is two micrometer. Actual length is about in the real, actual reality, in the real life size is two micrometer. Convert the actual length of the cell to millimeter. Uh, I have always uh, told you this one, how to do the conversion. So each millimeter equals to 1,000 micrometer. And we want to know now if this one is two micrometer, how many millimeter it is. I may just stop sharing this one with you. I want to share the board and to show you how we can do the calculation and make it easier. Well, okay, now I'll do the calculation for you. So first of all, you should know that each, uh, each one millimeter is equal to 1,000 micrometer. So it's very important for us in the beginning to know that. So I, I told you that you always can construct a table like this if you do not know or maybe to do how to do the conversions of the units. It makes your work a bit easier. So for example, this part you write millimeter and on the other side you write micrometer. I don't write, okay, micrometer. What I know is every one millimeter equals to 1,000 micrometer. Now, I want to convert micrometer to millimeter. This actual size of the cell is two micrometer. I write it on the micrometer column. And I, this one I don't know, and that's what I have to calculate. I want to know how much this is. Now, I always told you, the one in front, they need to be multiplied. So two multiply one. Then the one here next to each other, you need to divide the answer by this number, which is next to it. So, and you write the answer at the other one, other box here. So how do you do? It becomes two times one, Two times one. Then the answer should be divided by one thousand. Now you have to act. So two becomes the overall answer equals to zero point zero zero two millimeter. Don't forget if the unit is not written, you have to write. If the unit is not given or written there into the uh, into your question paper, you have to write it always in front of it. Otherwise, you will lose mark. So, now, the next part of the question is state the other information that the student needs in order to calculate the magnification of the drawing. First, we have to remember what the formula or the equation for magnification is. Magnification equals to uh, what you measure or uh, the, uh, what you actually are measuring and divided by the actual uh, size of the specimen. So image, image size divided by actual size. So in order to get the magnification, so we have actual size, and what we don't have is image size. So students need to calculate the image size maybe by measuring it with the ruler. Maybe the other ruler we can measure. So this is the answer for this one. And part C, describe the similarities and differences between the structure of the yeast cell and the structure of the bacterial cell. And use the information in the pictures or given to you in your answer 23.1 and 0.2. So this is the one, or example of the bacterium. And 2.1, which is a, Example, for example, very close to the plant cells as a kind of eukaryotes. I'm sorry, I just move it up a bit. So the difference and similarities between the structures of the bacteria and the yeast. Okay. Um, for the similarities, we can, for example, write the R unicellular 
or um, presence of the several DDDNA, for example, genetic material and ribosomes. And also, you can write, for example, cytoplasm, cell membrane, the other similarities. The difference is bacteria has no nucleus, as you can see in the diagram. Uh, but the yeast has a nucleus. Bacteria has a DNA, which is coiled or looped. Or the yeast DNA or the chromosomes. The DNA is linear in the yeast. Bacteria has no endoplasmic reticulum, but the yeast contains endoplasmic reticulum. Bacteria has no mitochondria, but the yeast has mitochondria. In the bacteria, no large or permanent vacuole, you can see. But in the yeast, always you can find a very permanent, large, quite large vacuole. In the bacteria, you find plasmids that are circular DNAs. But in the nucleus of, sorry, in the uh, yeast, you do not find any uh, plasmids. Bacteria, they don't have any kind of the membrane bound uh, organelles, but yeasts, they have membrane bound organelles, any kind of. So, for any, any of them that you write, because it has six marks, at least you have to mention like six, you know, important similarities and differences overall. So, it should be enough to get a full mark, not less than that. For example, three similarities, three differences, or it can be like two similarities and four differences. At least make sure you have written, mentioned four, six uh, important similarities and differences overall. The next part of the question. OK, there are two different uh, leaf are given to us. Uh, you know, this is the actual size of them is given is in the actual size, actually. The, I means they are not bigger or less. Actually, the papers should be printed out so you can measure it easily. Otherwise, it would be hard to uh, work on the computer or your laptop. Otherwise, you have to make, the, make sure that the zoom is on 100%. So still, it would be hard. Make a large drawing of R to show the shape of the leaf, the arrangement of the veins in the leaf, and you need to label the metrep. So in drawing the biological drawing, always make sure you have a very sharp pencil. You have your own uh, eraser, pencil sharpness, and you have a ruler with you to measure. Um, your always drawing need to be quite bigger than these uh, Things that they are given to you it can be either an image or photo, or it can be any kind of specimen given to you that you have to draw. So you always have to draw a bit bigger than what is given to you. And if, for example, this is the space provided for you, you have to at least fill up half of the this space for your drawing. You have to. It has to occupy half of this space. If the whole page is given to you, at least. You have to draw, your drawing should be um, occupying half of the page, okay? So make sure it is quite big. It's bigger than what you uh, actually is given to you. So let me see if I can uh, do this drawing for you on the board. I always check the question again and see which one you have to draw. Now he's asking you to draw R, not S, so I just remove this one too. Make it easier. So they asked you to draw this. For example, this is a space given to me. Uh, it's hard for me to draw on the uh, laptop. Or I just want to show you how to draw. The thing is that you have to just pay attention to the features that you see. Uh, they, uh, actually, the edges are quite smooth, so I just follow. And 
and make sure that the line or quiet um, is not actually is continuous, is not in continuous, is not broken. And then, okay, at the end. So I need to. It said I have to draw the midrib. So I make sure make sure that the midrib is a little bit bold and can be seen properly. So it actually starts from here and goes all the way, as you can see, till it reaches the tip of the leaf. So this is the midrib, and then I look at the veins. Look at the veins. If you make it bigger, you see the veins are not actually. Uh, they're all like parallel to each other straight and parallel they are not branch out from the midrib so what i can do is that like this this is what i see isn't it so i just draw whatever i see so there are the veins inside it but they are parallel to the midrib and to each other and a straight lines okay whatever so now it's a label so why is a label because it's very important it wants to know if you know how to label too for labeling i use this straight line so you should use a ruler use a ruler always for labeling your uh, your line should be either if you want to label for example, at the left side, so put all the writing at the left side. If you want to put it, the writing at the right side, the name of the labels, you put all at the right side. And you cannot put you cannot put the label line like this, upward or downward. It is wrong. It should be uh, horizontal. Then, exactly, it should be pointing to the uh, that. Uh, Things that you want to, uh, for example, label it. So I want to label my drip, so I just pick one place. And you take a ruler and your pencil and make a straight line like this. Your line shouldn't have any arrow. We do not put arrow on the line. So, and then your writing should be on the one side. You cannot write above, you cannot write under, it should be here. So I just write my drip. To be a little closer it's not maybe it wasn't easy for me to do that but this is how you have to do okay so your line should be smooth unbroken and you should look at the patterns and you should look at the features you can look at the everything is the edge is smooth or it is like uh, jacked if it is jacked or smooth you have to just follow just do that you do not need to be a painter, you don't need to be an artist. You just want to be uh, very uh, meticulous, so to know what actually you have to put there, include there. So now we have answered this question, we learned how to. Now we go to the next part of this question. There are a line across the width, the widest part of the arm. And measure in millimeter the distance and record your result include your units. So you don't forget whatever you measure, you have to write the units in front of it because nobody knows is it millimeter, centimeter, micrometer, nanometer, what is that? Kilometer. So just write whatever you have measured. But you need a ruler here. You take your ruler and the measure, which one R I think it said R. Yeah, the widest part of the R. Widest, I think here is the widest. So I just put the ruler here at this part and measure the distance between these two points on the two sides of these uh, leaf to see how much it is. If I do that on the paper, um, I think I get like 16 millimeter. Yeah, I got 16 millimeter the length of this it means 1.6 is not too big so for me it was 16 millimeter or 1.6 1 centimeter 6 millimeter 1 160 uh, what was it one six or 16 millimeter is uh, the width of this the widest part of the leaf okay 
So you just write 16 mm in the line which is provided for you. Okay, this is what you have measured on the, on the paper. Draw a line across the widest part of your drawing and measure the distance and record your result. Include your units. So you go back to your drawing. I will do that again. You go on the, the one that you have done. So I just want to show this one to you. Okay, so I said I want to measure. I'm not sure that I can use a ruler here, but I uh, just want to show you uh, that, for example, what you're all supposed to do. Um, you want to measure. So it means that the, the widest part of this leaf, if you uh, use your ruler or whatever, so you just see which one is the wider part, and then measure these two distance from here to here. For me, I told you it was 16 millimeter. I used I use a sorry I use a ruler to measure, so I get this size. Now, on this part, now it's on your own drawing. Measure again the same. Do the same thing and measure the widest part of your drawing, and then. Write down in millimeter. Okay, I just say, okay, this part is the widest part again for me. If I measure this one, for example, on the paper, because it's on the or whatever, but using a ruler, so I get 26 millimeter. My drawing is 26 millimeter, for example. Now, at the next part of this question, it will ask you to calculate the magnification of your drawing, showing your working, give your answer to the nearest whole number. So this part, it should read the question very well. I just want to show the question first to you, and then we come back to the Now, read again, calculate the magnification. Okay, magnification equals image size divided by actual size. And show your working. You have to show your working. Right, whatever you do. How do you do the calculations? How do you solve this? So give your answer, write your answer here. How many times per year? You write it here. And show your answer to the nearest whole number. For example, you have to round it up. You have to round it and to give the nearest whole number. So let's see how I answer this. So, uh, so we had magnification equals to uh, image size or the actual size. Image size is what you measure. Actual size is what is usually given to you. It's very quiet. Actual size is quite usually smaller than the image size because it's your drawing or usually you see that on the uh, high magnification. That's what you see. So now if I want to replace this, I do not know the magnification, but uh, I, I now have the my image size, this is my drawing size, so I just 20, write 26. And I have to divide it by the actual size. So I just write 16. That is why the real life exercise of this specimen. So if you do the calculation, you will get one point. I think if you do the calculation, you get 1.625. Now it says you have to write it as a whole number, nearest whole number. So whole number, if it is more than five or five, you just you, you should write two. So it is times two times bigger. So this is the magnification. But if it is less than five, so you should just write one times old or somehow similar equal to each other. So this is how you answer this question. So the magnification here is two times bigger. This is, this is wrong. Now, uh, is the, the next part of this question is asking you to write down or list down two visible differences other than the color between the R and S, these two leaves. Uh, of course, the, uh, this, uh, usually if you ask you to write the similarities or differences, please do not mention the color. The, the, the things, just want to write about those things that you see. That don't write about the things that you think or you imagine. Or you think that it should be white? Is in I don't see any color. That is, it's a black and white uh, question paper. So it's already also mentioned for you. Don't write color. But other than that, what are those two 
visible differences between R and S. So, what can you, for example, write is that uh, about the shape you can write. You can say the shape of them. Uh, R is narrow or thin, but S is oval or rounded or wide. I can go back onto maybe the diagram is better. So just when I'm explaining, you can refer to these uh, pictures. So you have, you have the shape of them. R is a bit narrow or thin, but S is oval, round or wide. About the venation, I mean the veins of them. Look at the veins patterns. In the R, the veins are parallel and or straight. And but in the S, they are netted or branched or they are curved. You can write these things about it. About the leaf stalk, about the leaf stalk or stalk of the leaf, um, there is no petiole in the R, but S has petiole. Okay, that's also very important. About the appearance of them, the one of them is shiny, which is R. If you look at the R, they are in the, uh, that leaf, which is labeled as R. Um, it means that th th that one is shiny, bright, and light, but S is dull or darker a bit. And look at the edges. Uh, the edge of R is smooth, but S is irregular or toothed. So very important things that we want to again mention. But we said that the so what uh, R in the R. Uh, sorry, I just lost the page. I think. Um, going back to it. Okay, in the R, we don't have a very uh, actually like this distinctive petiole, but here. We have here, but here we don't have. That's why I mentioned that one. Well, we have, okay, so we have answered also this one. So we go to question number 25. Uh, well, I do not know. Okay, we have to make a link. We have to match them together. See which one of these components of the diet matches which of these functions. Calcium ions, fat, protein, and vitamin D, we have to make a line to the correct box for each, what is the function of each of them. Okay, uh, for the first one, calcium ions, the function is to make bone for bone, bones or is in, used in the bone formations. So you in the bones, we need calcium, and all the bones are made of calcium. Um, fat. Fat or the oil uh, is actually uh, used in the for as an insulator, so it are good for insulation. It means that they do not let any prevent the heat loss from your body or lose loss of the energy. And proteins are actually well known for being used in making uh, different parts of the cells. It's very good for growth of the muscles. Muscles are made of the protein, so. The protein are used to make muscles. Vitamin D is also used as a, a one of these components of the bone formation. Very important nutrients necessary for uh, formation of your bones. So they are how you are connecting them. You will just make a line from here to here, here to here, and fat to as it through the insulation box and protein to growth of the muscle. Well, I have this diagram. Average percentage composition of some common foods. Average percentage of the common uh, composition of some foods, meat, white fish, whole bread, beans, and green leafy vegetables. Look at the key. The keys are very important because that side other doesn't have anything. This empty box, its part, which is empty, shows water. And fiber is just by the dotted dots inside it, inside the box. And carbohydrates, it means that this, uh, for example, whole milk bread has this much of 
carbohydrates, too much sugar in it. So if you take bread, it means you will, it is lots of sugar in it. And this one also has sugar, but you cannot find sugar in the fish and meat. And uh, we have fat. Fat you can find a lot in the meat. You can find in the fish a bit only. And in the bread, whole milk bread, also you have, but in the beans and the leafy vegetables, you don't have it. You don't have anything here. Proteins are shown by these ones. So this pattern it has. So it should be this one. So protein can be found in meat, fish, bread, beans, and uh, leafy vegetables. But the most is, the highest amount is in the meat. The highest amount of the fats you can find again in the meat. The highest amount of the carbohydrates you can find in the bread, or I can see. But you don't have in the fish and meat. And because no sugar, of course. Fiber you can find in the bread, beans, and leafy vegetables because bread is also made of the vegetables plants so uh, of course it has fiber but fish and meat they don't have and water all of them contain water now let's see what the question is about state the type of food in figure 25 one that contains the most fat and now we should be which one has the most fat this one which is meat okay we know now state one type of the food that does not contain fiber fiber was this dotted one which one doesn't have? You can write either white fish or you can write meat, any of them. Describe the importance of fiber in the diet. Why the fiber is important? Because it prevents constipation and add volume to the material in your gut, in the elementary canal, and promotes movement of the food along the elementary canal. So that's why it's very important. It makes it easier for you to digest your food and bowling would be much more easier and that defecation would be easier. But the state one food that contains vitamin C, which one has a vitamin C? So we can say any kind of the citrus fruit uh, or vegetables, you can mention any. Um, then state one disease caused by lack of vitamin C, that is a scurvy, uh, is C-U-R-V-Y. And then the next one in this table, in this question, there is a table given to you, there's an activity given to you and the amount of energy which is used during that activity. Uh, in 24 hours after the meal. Calculate the total energy used by the adult male in 24 hours. Total energy used by the adult in 24 hours. So, adult, so this is for adult male, and over 24 hours, the total amount of energy, you have to sum them up. You have to sum them up, and the answer finally would be 12,000 kg. If you want to know how much is the overall, you have to add 2,400 plus 3,000 plus 6,600. All sum up together, it will be 12,000 kilojoules. Calculate the percentage of energy used by the adult male while sleeping. So, while sleeping. While it is sleeping, it is 2,400 it used. And the overall usage of this um, energy that they actually need, the total energy used, was 12,000, you remember. Uh, from each 12,000, uh, 2,400 of it, is actually used up during the sleeping. So you want to calculate the percentage of it. Okay, follow me with the my calculations. So I need to clean this one up first to open a new page. So, so I, I just want to construct again so my own table to show you how to do calculation of conversions. So uh, I told you that. We want to calculate the percentage of energy used by the adult male while sleeping. We said the overall energy that they uh, used in a 24 hours was 12,000, isn't it? This is overall kg. This is kilojoules. 
And so I want to construct my table again, this one. Okay. Here, I write the total. All I have. And at this part, I want to you know, sleeping is how much. Total from from 12,000 kg kilojoules. During the slipping is using around 2,400 kilojoules. Okay. Now we want to get a percentage. If if the total was 100, and I'm going to put easier for those on that are a little bit like not very uh, confident with this uh, mathematical calculations. So how much would be the percentage of the this one, how much is percentage? From from 12,000 is 2,400. Out of 100 is how much you want to convert it. So again, as I told you, the one in front, the one in front should be multiplied, and the one next to each other are divided, and you write the answer in the other box that you don't know. So it would be 2,400 times 100, then all divided by 12,000. Answer here after the usual calculation become 20%. That's the final answer. And finally is the last part and the last question. State the name of the process that releases energy to maintain a constant body temperature on the homeostasis while the adult male is sleeping. So that's the question is that what is the name of the, pro the process that through which the cells are producing energy or making energy for themselves? So that's what happens in the mitochondria and all that. That one is aerobic respiration. So aerobic respiration, uh, which is the through that food and the oxygen mixed together to make water, carbon dioxide, and huge amount of the energy which is used by the cell. Now they are making a story uh, that the adult may is using to for sleeping during the sleeping, or, or, or else these are extra information not needed. So the most important things, what, what, in, through what, which process your body produces energy or releases energy for maintaining, for doing anything. This energy can be used for anything. So it's through the aerobic respiration. Thank you very much for paying attention to me. Hope it will be helpful. And if you have any question, you can write to me. Thank you very much. Stay safe and healthy.